This is my 1500 mile review of the 2022 Kawasaki Vulcan Voyager. We will be going over my likes, some of my dislikes, just things that i found since I've been writing it. But before we do that, I do ask that you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and help me grow the YouTube channel. Okay, with that out of the way, let's jump in. We'll go over some of the uh, just compartments, a brief overview for those of you that didn't get to see the first video. That first video will go more into depth on these things, but we'll cover them real quick here. Okay, there's the gauges here, old school looking gauges. There's the radio there, digital or LCD radio, I guess. Um, nice old school looking gauges, 1500 miles on it, 32.7 average. Um, that is because I have been practicing slow speed riding, so that is tanking my average. That is not what this normally gets. Usually it gets around a 38 to 30 mile, 38 to 39 miles per gallon average. So that's where that's coming from. Uh, we've got the nice speakers there couple glove boxes here one on the left side of the front fairing one on the right side got the chrome cover got that nice paint job very shiny chrome heel toe shifter floating floorboards same for the passenger we'll do a walk around this way we've got the saddle bags here we've got engine guards there saddle bag guards that come pre uh, loaded on the bike we've got the trunk there antenna which i finally got replaced after i picked it up it fell off and the dealership sent me a new one we got the front fairing there with that super tall windshield got the lowers there help cover your legs engine guards on that side we got the absk act from kawasaki same stuff on this side the floating floorboards for the passenger as well. Nice big saddle bags. Got the trunk storage there. Really nice, comfortable, padded, thick seat. Same for the driver. You can get backrest for it, I don't have it. No issues or complaints on passengers. They're extremely comfortable on it. Okay, that's pretty much a brief overview. Let's go over the likes of my bike. The likes. First for me is the color scheme, which is why I bought this year. I like it. Um, second, the power. I have no issues with power on it. Biggest bike I've ever owned. Said that in the first video. The comfort. Extremely comfortable. You can go on a 600 mile ride, no issues with it. At least for me anyways, I'm 5'9", 205 pounds. Uh, my feet touch both sides easily. Very smooth riding, sets up right easy. It is a heavy bike. Um, so you do got to note that, but it's a very smooth riding bike. Once you're going down the road, there's no issues with it. Let's get into, uh, I guess another like is the storage space, plenty of storage. Uh, and that's about, that's about it for the bike really for the likes. I mean, it's, it's a good bike. It's cheap, super smooth riding, extremely comfortable. Passengers are extremely comfortable on it. Um, it does what it sets out to do. It's a... I guess if you want to call it budget-friendly touring bike. I mean, it sets it and does exactly that. It allows you a full decked out tour bike for a fraction of the cost of some of the other bikes. Okay, now let's get into the dislikes on it. Um, these are just things that I've noticed since I've been riding it. One of the dislikes that I do have is with the radio. Um, radio is not very loud on it. I wear a full face modular helmet. So when I'm going down the road with my helmet on doing 65 with max volume, I don't really hear it that well. So speakers could be better. Uh, you can still hear it, but it's not great. The other thing with the radio is the Bluetooth, which is essentially non-existent on it. It doesn't come with a Bluetooth head unit that you can connect your phone directly to, which is a disappointment, especially in today's technological age where that's pretty much expected and standard. Um, you can get, and I'll show you here, I'll try to, you can get in this glove box right here, there is a way that you can make a, you can get an adapter that plugs in right here, and you have to get an adapter that then plugs into here 
which then you can then plug into your phone. But if I'm not mistaken, I believe that that adapter comes with a 3.5 millimeter auxiliary jack to then plug into like an iPod or a, a phone. But I don't know about you, but when's the last time that you've seen a phone that actually comes with a 3.5 millimeter input anymore? Most phones are coming with a USB type C and they don't even have an auxiliary jack anymore. So then you'd have to buy another auxiliary cable that then plugs into your phone and then you can plug in to that auxiliary jack uh, to then have a connection to the bike for the Bluetooth capabilities. And I don't, don't quote me on this, but I, I, I don't have it, so I don't know, but I don't even believe with that that gets you handlebar controls. If you have that set up and you're using it, let people know in the comments if you do get the handlebar controls, uh, because I don't know, but I don't think it does. Um, so that, that right there is a big disappointment for me of, I feel like in today's age, we should have a head unit that just comes with the bike that you can just directly connect the Bluetooth with. And we shouldn't really be having to buy accessory cables to then adapt and connect your phones to to listen to music, especially on a touring bike. I'm not talking we need a LED screen, a touchscreen with navigation capabilities and all that other stuff. No, uh, that does add to the cost. And that's one of the things that this bike succeeds with is, is a lower cost. But you can get a cheap head unit with Bluetooth connectivity. That shouldn't really add to the cost of the overall bike. Um, it just seems to me that Kawasaki's not quite with the technological advancements of today in that aspect. Another negative for this bike is, and I know I said it in the first one, so it's kind of a weird deal here, but my, another negative for me is the looks. And I'll explain. The looks for me, I love the bike, I love the looks. However, this is my very first Kawasaki Voyager I have ever owned, and it is a 2022. I stopped looking at around model year 2010 for comparison, and I did not see any visual changes from a 2010 model to the 2022. The only way you can tell they're different really is by looking at the paint job. Otherwise, from a 2010 to a 2022, none of that what you're looking at has changed. It's all the same. They haven't they haven't changed the look of the bike, the styling, nothing in at least 13 years. There have been changes into the technology they've put into it, like the um, heat management system, the K-Act, ABS, and that stuff. I believe there's been some changes there, but as far as just strictly visual aspect and appeal, it hasn't changed. So I just feel like they're lacking in, in 13 years, you can't change the design to give people a reason to trade in their model to get a newer looking bike or something different. If I, if I was a Voyager owner that had a older bike, I, I don't see a reason to really upgrade the bike. They're not giving you any reason to. The bike doesn't look any different. Nothing's changed. So my personal opinion is they, I would like to see them change the design, change the style, give, give other people that have been a member of the Kawasaki family some other options, a different style, just something else. Um, so that, that is another dislike of I want to see Kawasaki kind of expand there. Uh, change the design. Go, go, you can't, shouldn't cost that much of an addition. It shouldn't really make that much cost-wise of a difference to give a different looking bike. Give people the option is, is all I'm saying there. And I believe my last dislike really for the bike is this chrome piece right here. And the reason I say that, as you may have noticed earlier in the video, because I think it caught it, but if you look down here, right there, that's a paper towel that I have stuck right there. And then on the other side, I have the same thing. I have a paper towel stuck right there. And the reason I have that paper towel there is is because that little chrome piece 
will rattle and rattle and rattle and it is super annoying and I'm not convinced it's not scratching the paint down there so that thing if you don't do something there I got to figure out a better design get some um, rubber to put under there or a tank bib something else um, but that thing rattles and it drives me nuts so that's minor minor dislike most most of my dislikes are really just they're, they're nothing uh, the bike's wonderful I have really no issues with how it drives how it rides how it performs if you have issues with performance on it you can do other tunes and things that people have done to address those issues um, but that's not for me I like the bike just the way it is that way uh, another complaint that I've heard in the comments from the other video is on the d-cell when you're d-selling it has pretty heavy engine braking on it and it'll it'll kind of pop and it has a low and deep growl it'll backfire pop on you um, and a very heavy engine d-cell on it when you let off the throttle personally i like it that i enjoy it i i like the sound i like the how aggressive it feels when you let off that throttle it doesn't bother me i like it um people have done the engine tunes that have addressed that and it's worked for them so if that's something that bugs you and you don't like it there's a tune or uh, ivan's tune i think is what people recommend that you can get to get it done and fix that but overall 99 percent truly i love this bike there's no reason for me to go with something else i don't care about the fancy bells and whistles or the heated seats heated handle grips uh, touchscreen navigations any of that stuff um, this bike does not come with that stuff standard so if you're looking for that i believe you can get upgrades for at least the seats and the handle grips and stuff not the led screens obviously uh, but if you're looking for that stuff stock this this won't have it for you but for me that's that's acceptable that's okay i don't need it don't want it that is it guys that is my 1500 mile review overall still love the bike a couple minor complaints just letting you guys know kind of things that i found maybe there'll be issues for you um but yeah give the channel a like hit that subscribe button hope to see you on the next one